Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of the Service Without Excuses podcast. We're on location today at All States Restoration in English Town, New Jersey. I'm with my buddy Carl. Carl is the head honcho, so to speak. Um, he is now at All States Restoration, and Carl is going to explain a little bit more about what he does in the company. But one of the things we're going to talk about and um, it's going to be in part is the difference between different companies. You have corporate owned entities, you have franchisors, you have franchisees, and then you have independents. And Carl's going to explain the difference between an independent and the difference because he has a diverse background, as I do, uh, working for some larger franchisors and corporate office as well as franchisees, I believe. So he's going to explain some of the differences you should look at. Now, I did go out on a job site today, and I was very impressed with how they explained everything to the customer and, and assured the customer um, that they were doing it right and by what's called a standard. And it's, it's a standard, it's the standard for the restoration industry that we're all supposed to follow no matter who they hire, or who they choose to use. So Carl, please tell us a little bit about yourself, sir. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, my name's Carl. I've uh, been <clears throat> about 32 years working in the industry, uh, worked on it for a franchisee, uh, for a large company. And uh, from that point, I was also asked to join their corporate team. Uh, worked on both sides, on the corporate side and on the national response team of, of the said company. Um, worked uh, all angles, worked my way from water damage tech all the way up to uh, general manager uh, to a certain point where when you started questioning myself on the standards that was being done, or they started kind of more or less walking away from the IICRC standard and have their own secret behind the scene type of standards, um, started questioning myself, um, you know, were we actually doing it right and who was in the best interest? Uh, so I got to a certain point where, you know, kind of questioned myself. I wasn't really, you know, sure which way to go. So I kind of walked away, uh, came to work uh, for Sean. Uh, first thing Sean said to me was, you know, one thing about working here, you got to do it by the book. We don't write our own standards. Uh, we follow the ones that's already written by the, uh, you know, I, I seriously, uh, we do a lot of training um, to, to keep up them standards uh, really daily. So I still really opened my eyes a lot to, you know, how things were, were done versus how they are now. And every day the industry is changing, constantly changing. New materials are coming out. Uh, and the one thing that I learned basically when I worked for corporate was, um, if I learned anything, it was corporate greed, uh, was that they are, it, it's all on them. You're, uh, the customer is just uh, a number to them. Uh, they didn't really care about how following it. They said they would follow the IRCC standard. I learned that, you know, basically it was just a logo that they followed. Uh, they would write their own. Uh, the insurance company has what they call SLAs, which are their guidelines. Uh, and then they incorporate these into these larger companies. Uh, case in point, the three-day three dry out. You know, the, everything three-day, three-day, three-day. Uh, I got to the point where the technicians were afraid that if they weren't able to dry a, a, a house in three to five days, that they may lose their job. Uh, and so they would do what they can to make sure that structure was dry. Uh, point going in with, you know, those little quarter inch prongs sticking into the baseboard. Oh, yeah, it's dry. Three to four days, it's dry. Uh, never once were we ever directed to pull off the baseboard, put screws in and start learning about bound water and unbound water. Yeah. And so that was kind of a big thing. So when I started questioning myself, I walked away, kind of came here to all states, started sitting down with Sean. Um, we have a we have a consultant, uh, David Sweet, that works with us, really kind of trains us hard to learn these standards. Uh, it's to the point even now, uh, as the general manager here, we do weekly reading uh, like you have a book club and we open up the 500 from the lowest tech to the highest tech, we do reading assignments. And every week we discuss what we read in these assignments. So my techs learn what these standards are and how to proceed with this. What that does for the homeowner basically gives us the ground. This is what it says, and this is how it's to be interpreted. Um, I was just called out just now by an adjuster saying this one job was a three to uh, five day dry out. I handed the, the manual, show me in the book where it says three to five days. You know, it does say there's a dry standard. And, you know, we all know how to get to the dry standard. Uh, you know, he's like, well, in my 20 years, I've never done that. And I turned to him and says, well, you're doing it wrong. And you have been doing it wrong. Um, you know, it kind of even goes point to that. I talked to one of my past colleagues uh, and, you know, I mentioned it to them and they told me, you're absolutely right. We're probably leaving these houses wet. We're probably leaving it, but it would it would cost too much to go too far into this billions of dollars now to go ahead and admit that we probably left your house wet and you may be in a mold risk. So deeper into this, now it's got me that sick gut feeling that, you know, that was one one of those guys at one point. So I said, what can I do now is is change. You know, I, I could change. I could change the industry. I could train my technicians from this point to do it right. Um, 
to put herself in line with the right people like uh, David Sweets, uh, Rob, people that knows that to do it right. And from this point, let's make the change now. Uh, we don't have to go back. I mean, we, you know, we could move the future as it is right now and start to do it right. You know, I often say there's a big difference between ignorance and stupidity. Stupid is you can't help it. It's just the, the, the mental aptitude you have. You don't have the ability, cognitive ability to change anything. Ignorant is choosing to be stupid and still putting your, your, uh, your head in the mud, so to speak. One of the things I wanted to go into that he was talking about is a standard. The ICRC is a governing body that writes this thing called a standard. And the standard is what every drying professional and every insurance professional is to follow. It's the thing that the insurance company and the restorer both equally agree to or should agree to. And that's where some of the challenges have come in. I know when I was doing it, I look back now and go, oh my God, I, I mean, I, just houses were not dried, even though we thought it was dry, it wasn't. And, and you learn this technology. And with anything, they, there's an old saying, you can't teach old dog new tricks. Well, it depends on the old dog. Sometimes old dogs like ourselves, you know, want to learn what's new and what needs to be done in order to make the ultimately, at the end of the day, the customer safe, the customer feeling a good, um, a good, warm, trendy feeling of we did the job correctly, that it was done in the house. Uh, explain to our listeners a little bit about what technicians should do. When the first call comes in, somebody has a water, fire damage, mold damage. I know mold's a little bit different. It's not always as, as a big of an emergency. It is urgent, but not always an, an emergency issue. Um, what should people expect? Well, here what we learn to do is, is education is part. And like I said, our techs go through a lot of training. We take that training, we pass it on to the homeowner from the phone call. As soon as they call us, we start educating them on the right thing to do and how to proceed. Uh, from that, we get a technician on site. And the first thing that we do is find out how much they want to engage. And we explain to them, you know, what's what's going to what's gonna happen. Uh, education is, is key with this. Uh, so what our technicians do is we walk them through the claim. We hand them a meter and we will find the dry spot. So when they're holding that meter and it's beeping, they see that number. They know what's wet. We also let them know what a dry standard is and what a dry goal is. And we tell the homeowners, we want you to question us. We don't know you, you don't own us. You know, if you're, if, you, if you're, if this is your number one investment, your house, you should be concerned about who's in your house. So the first thing we tell them is we want you to question us. We, we give them as much document as we can, but we tell them to go out, research it, Google it, look into us. When the call comes in, first thing we tell them is to look at our website, kind of get an idea about who's showing up at your house right now. Um, and then when we get in there, we come with an array of tools uh, and we make that homeowner an integrated part of their water loss. A lot of the companies we dealt with, basically you shake their hands, a senior tech goes in there, talks to the homeowner, they go in, they look, they tell the homeowner we'll be right back. They walk all around their house, the meters are going off. They come back and say, yeah, it's wet, sign here. Next thing you know, got three or four techs walking, walking in and you, you know, homeowner says he had a lot of banging, a lot of cutting, a lot of stuff going on, all the dust and everything going on. At the end of the day, they're like, okay, we're done. We'll be back tomorrow. And, and that's the way they do. Cause you're, again, you're, you're, you're not a family to them. You're just a number. You're just a statistics into this. We turn around and we try to make friends. The first case is, is when I do a water loss, not that I want to be back in your house doing another water loss, but at least if I see you in a public place, I'm not going to run and hide the other way. Uh, we have a lot of repeated customers that we get because we build that relationship with them. We are totally upfront with everything that's going to happen right or wrong. You know, it's, it's, it's what we do. It may not be the happiest, you know, you know, cupcakes and candy that they're going to hear, but we're going to be honest with them. But most important, they are educated. Every single day we give them readings. Uh, we use the OmniSense program. So we got eyes on that loss 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, and then, you know, we get texts out there. So there's always a warm body out there too, not just to kind of, you know, to, you know, check the equipment. That's a big part of it, but it's, it's to talk to the homeowner eye to eye. Uh, we get in there and talk to them and we walk them through the claim. And again, we tell them we're coming over, open some time for us. You know, we want to, we want to sit with you, the homeowner and explain everything to you. The difference is with that is here. We take the time, we schedule it where when I work for corporate, you know, the corporate uh, company, we would do five and one truck would do five and six jobs a day. You're in and out before they even know you were there. That's insane. Yeah, that that's truly is unless you're I mean, I, I have I've seen bigger companies where they're going in and out. And you really don't know. One of the things that that I, I saw you really pressing on is communication. So the, the private person, the person that hires all states or a company like all states, 
um, they have no idea what they're, they just know it's wet or they got soot, they got fired, they might have some mold. They know it's a problem. That's why you're there in the first place. But the difference is they are not educated on the ways to do it. So I, I know you, I know Sean, you guys communicate effectively to the customer to explain them everything that's going on in layman's terms, not in relative humidity and moisture density to a particular item and, and all the things that we might talk about as technical people, but the consumer doesn't know that. The customer doesn't know any of that stuff. So I know that's a big, uh, I've heard it over the years, um, you know, our technicians do a great job. Our customers just don't know it. And there is some truth to that, that, you know, they're, they're, you're going into the house and you're, they're doing the job technically correct, but the customers don't know anything as far as that. All they know is you're here and you're gone. And what separates a professional? I, I really believe that's a professional person. Uh, the first thing that we we kind of realize is that you know these are our moms and our grandmoms and our aunts and uncles that we're dealing with right now. You know they're not certified. Uh, a lot of these companies come in and they start relative humidity, vapor depression, uh, you know, bound water, unbound water. Uh, they they don't all they know is their house is is being affected right now, and they they do hear a lot about mold and odor and you know and wood rot and you know, your claim may not be covered and that's kind of where their mindset is. so we made a point is when we educate it we bring it down to their level we onboard a customer so we have a project manager that's there he will sit down with them if need be and many times over a cup of coffee or tea and explain this to them you know we have texts that's coming back reporting back to them what's being done most important we're eye to eye we're sitting right in front of them and we're explaining it to them on their terms you know, we'll use all means of communication, pictures, videos, documents. We can open the book that they don't understand anything that they're they're reading at that point. So we're educating them on what's going on. But most importantly, we tell them, you know, you're, you're, you're at 100 percent. We got to get you down to a 10. It's as simple as that. We show them we give them a meter. We carry probe meters with them. With us. They go in and they, they tested that the whistle goes off. And she says, oh, it's wet. So she knows that it's wet. Funniest thing we ever deal with is you you get a you get a, an adjuster. One of these corporate companies come in. Our water damage is down at the floor. First thing they come in is they take a pad sensor and they stick it right at shoulder level. Like the homeowner knows at that point, the water never got up that high. They're all down at the bottom. So, so educating them from the get-go uh, onboarding uh, is, is key, but we also get their end game. We kind of set their expectation of what they expect to get as the job goes on. And we, and we kind of, we set it, you know, first thing is we're not, we tell them that if you ever heard of a three or four day dry, you know, it's probably not going to happen. It may, it may not, but at least they know upfront. I have a saying that I tell my guys that if you say it beforehand, you're making a statement. If you say it afterhand, you're making excuses. And that's nowhere where I want to go with this. I want to be completely upfront with the homeowners. And I invite them to have your family members come over and ask us. We just did a loss and it was an elderly lady and, uh, and her husband. And we engaged her daughter and son-in-law to come over and engage with us. I want to know what the end game is. What is your expectation you know, of what you explain to get? And then we set that. That's, that's crucial. Now, some of the things you were explaining... Um... One thing that comes to mind, it's, it's the background question. You have a water damage problem. You have a fire damage problem in your house. You call your insurance company first and foremost to find out what you should do because it's almost like a second guess. It's almost like turning on a car. I'm going to call my insurance company or somebody tells them, you know, this might be, you should call your insurance company. People educate them that way. And they call the insurance company and they automatically say, we have quote unquote preferred vendors, people that we recommend that we back and we, we will do it. They, would you like me to have one of them give you a call now uh, to take care of it? The problem I've had with that, and I've been on both sides, I've been on the vendor side as you have with, with that is you're taking and you're steering the customer or the consumer um, a one direction. In certain states like New York, I'm not sure in New Jersey, it's illegal to do that. You can't even, you can, you can give people options, but you definitely can't say, use my company. I'm sending them right out. This is what it is. They can recommend somebody based on their program's experience. There's nothing wrong with that, but there is something wrong with telling somebody, this is who I'm going to send out right now and not giving them an option. Explain the difference between, well, let's start with that. We won't even get into franchises and, and independent companies yet. Let's go with What's the difference they should expect? Why is that not a good sign? Why should they 
do a little bit more research, as you said, why they should take a recommendation, maybe from a friend or family member, they should look online to check out reviews and feedback people have left for a company to make a decision. I know in my business, I also own a service business, reviews are 90% of the of the effective result at the end of the day, it's not even the sale, they're already hiring me because of the reviews and the feedback they get. So why would they trust an adjuster that's looking out for at the end of the day, their own bottom line, their own insurance company's bottom line? Oh, absolutely. The first, the first, the first thing is it's, it's a very good point. Uh, in today's time with social media, um, homeowners, policyholders, they get out and they say it, good or bad. So the first thing I recommend is is go to the websites, Google the name, um, find out what's what's going on with them. Uh, there's uh, there's a couple of websites that will go in and let you know the truth about some of these contractors. You got to remember when that uh, when that uh, insurance carrier's recommending a carrier that carrier that they're recommending works for them. They don't work for you. They're, um, they're head, they have what they call SLA guidelines. And this is what they tell them to follow. You know, it's not just a three or four day dry. It's what size equipment to use in. This is how basically A to B. Your assurance company should be the one who pays the bill. They hire a restoration company to be the experts. And what's happened is a lot of times they're flip-flopping and they're making the decisions. And no, they're not supposed to be, you know, recommending, but they'll also have the homeowner uh, afraid to go like, you know what, well, if you hire somebody else, I can't guarantee paying their bill. And this is a lot that's coming back to us. Like they want to use us, but then they're like, well, they said, if I don't use A, B, or C, there's no guarantee that I'm going to be able to cover that bill. And you're going to be held with the uh, responsibility of paying, paying it. So we recommend, you know, do the research, before you put the claim in, if you're going to use all states restoration, bring us in before you even put that claim in. Let's see what you got. Let's kind of put out the power questions to them. So when you when you actually make that phone call, at least you're telling them what you got. And you're telling them that, you know what, I'm an educated homeowner right now. This is what I need. I have all states here. They're good. Everything is kind of checked out with them. And I'm going to proceed with them. What they do do is they will send out peer reviews. They will send out their vendors eventually if they don't like what they see. And they're going to still try to manipulate you to go in their direction. You know, that's kind of key. And you just said a key word, manipulation. Um, you should be able to use whoever you want to use. That could be Santa Claus, Mickey Mouse, or All States Restoration to do a job. Anybody that tells you you should do something and is still has a conflict of interest with that person is, in my opinion, something you should shy away from. Now, one of the key responsibilities I had with the company I used to co-own was I was the person that was between the, the our company and the insurance company. And I loved, perfectly loved talking to adjusters that were smart, intelligent, and actually cared. I despised and hated adjusters that would go in there with predetermined results with their idea that this is what it has to be because I've been doing it for 20 years this way, even though they're not looking out for the customer because they're looking out for their bottom line. And that's, that's something that really used to rile me. Again, if you were a good insurance uh, restoration company and you're a good insurance carrier, uh, we got along really good. When we, when we didn't, um, we didn't. And, and I did not play any mixed games about that. You should want a company, no matter what, that has your back, your best interest, no matter who it is. It doesn't mean it has to be one company or the next. It's who has your best interest. Who do you have a good gut feeling about when they come in the door and they're explaining A to Z and the true response to it? You want somebody that's independent and away from that. Um, I actually got away from, from TPA programs uh, at the end because I just thought they were, they were trying to dictate to the end consumer, the customer, um, that this didn't need to be done. And the standard you mentioned before, I would do the same thing, pull it out and say, okay, so the standard you're following and I'm following now, one of us is not following it. One of us is not taking care of the customer. Where's the disconnect? What do you not know? And, the, and quite often they'll say to me, the adjusters in the field would say, well, my, my boss won't allow me to do that because, um, you know, that's not how we do it. And that goes above my guidelines. And now I'm going to get in trouble for doing it. And then my response was get him on the phone, take it off you, tell him I'm rattling your chain. And uh, we need to talk to him. And I've gone all the way up to the corporate level people at some insurance companies to say, listen, if, if two and two equals four, it's four. It's not three. You have to look at a situation and say every situation is different um, and handle every situation different. You talk about adaption and adapting to technology and things. Everything changes. We have to adapt to it. If we're not, we're not in the customer's best hand. We're not perceived. They're not perceived as clients. They're now customers, one-time transactions. I always preach this. 
You don't want to be perceived as a customer. You know people refer your services um, consistently over and over again. Your reputation is immaculate on, online for a reason. And that's what you want to know about. I think anybody's restoration business needs to be seen as an expert. If you're not, get out of the business. It's that simple. The days of I just opened my business 20 years ago, similar to what we discussed with this adjuster today, I've been doing it for 20 years and I've been doing it right. And you've been doing it for 20 years wrong. I learned something today recording this podcast that I didn't know I had to learn <laughs> right beforehand. But you have to learn and adapt to and go, okay, what is it? Well, I don't like the way that works. It doesn't matter. This is how it changes. This is how it reacts. So going into that, people have a lot of options, as they should. They Absolutely. should have a lot of options. And, and that's, that's the, the beautiful thing about the United States of America for the world, for the most part. What's the difference between a corporate entity like a Belfour, that's a big, giant company, corporate owned, no franchisees, a franchisor that is, of course, in the business of selling franchisee systems and processes to the guys, maybe relationships with insurance companies, and then independents like yourselves and like what I was where we're just an independent entity that always strive to be the best at what we did, always strive to be on top of our game, strive to give the, our customers the best experience possible, guaranteed. Um, what's the difference between? Well, one of the difference I, that, I, uh, that I've noticed, uh, and we got a name for it called goal posting, that there's a high number and a low number. When, you are, when you're in a large corporate number, your overhead is a lot higher. So they have a number they have to hit and it's broken down to how many times that wheel's got to turn on that truck per day. So they will have to charge and do what they can to get that. So then a lot of the numbers that you, that you get coming in are already fractured before you they even walked in your house. Uh, you know, if, if an adjuster or one of these large companies come to you and say, Oh, this is a $6,000 claim and they have not yet pulled out a tape measure. I would put red flags up. The difference with us is that we own all our equipment. We have our number set. And if we wanted to, we could go out right now and do the job for free. We don't have a number set. We work strictly on facts. Not that, well, it should be. Well, this is a you know 5,000 square foot house. This is where it's got to be. The house that we just came from, that adjuster handed him a $9,000 estimate. The job's not even done. This is cat three. We're not even cleaning this yet. And he says, well, that's what I'm settling for. He came in there with a number already, which is scary. So these, these larger companies and even the franchisees. Now there is some, I will say there is some real good ones out there, especially in the New Jersey area. Absolutely. Um, real good ones um, that, that, you know, I, I will stand behind and, you know, it's, it's not that we're rivals and, you know, it, it's kind of funny. Everybody thinks we're rivals. I have a good friend that owns a serve pro. Um, and then, <laughs> matter of fact, I was on the phone with them uh, yesterday because I got a, I got an incident at my house right now as we speak. Um, and, and it's not that we're rivals. It's who's doing it right versus who's doing it wrong. Some of the franchisees may be sitting behind a big name, but they're doing it right because they know, you know what? This is my business. That's the other point. You have an owner. He has to answer to that. A lot of these owners invest their personal life into the company. So there it comes back to research knowing what their background is look to see what people says about them uh but i could say for the larger companies the the big names that's out there uh the difference with them is is that they have a number and they got to have that number down to uh, like i said i they got to figure out how many times that wheel on that truck's got to turn and if not they have to fluctuate that and work their margins here at all states we don't we don't have to work those margins um you know, of course, we, we have to work, we have to do jobs and everything like that. But uh, we look at each each uh, job individual. And I don't go in there with a number. I report the facts and we bill off on the facts of what was actually done. You know, a look at it from a standpoint, you hire an attorney for something. You say that attorney is representing you. Does the attorney have a flat price for every single uh, job? Well, let's say the attorney is representing a corporation versus me. Is he probably going to have more cost and more time involved into representing that that company, that larger entity versus just one person? First of all, he's got to get information from multiple people. He's got multiple statements. He's got to get one statement from me. Is the price going to be the same for both of us? Of course not. He's got a lot more work to do. And I'm not a fan of lawyers, so I'm not going that route. But I will say, look at it from an attorney standpoint. They can't do it. Yes, they can flat charge a quarter hour, an hour, whatever their rate is. That's fine. But is it going to take the same amount of work to do one person versus the other? No, of course not. Every situation is different. Every situation you go into, um, I go into is different. When I work with a client, 
same thing. You know, to give people a person's advice that wants to be a one or two truck company is completely different than a person that has a 25 truck company. They want completely different advice and they should. They're two entirely different companies. Well, the same advice goes forward to your drying job. Every job is different. The ceiling height can be different. The walls different can be affected. The materials that you're drying are different. The length of time on the job. Did this go two or three? Well, I think it started this day. I think it started this day is a big variable because if it started three days ago, it's a totally different water damage than when the pipe first leaked in the first place. And insurance companies can't really dictate that. They try to say, we fall this, this category, this class, this. Many, I, I don't even understand fully what that exactly means or what it's about. Some do, some don't. They just look at that and say three days, four days, but they don't understand the science behind it. And actually the person that came up with three days, I used to know very well. He's, he's gone from this earth now, but he was a true genius. And he regretted ever, ever making the statements about three day or four day dry. It was a marketing trend for a program that his a different vendors, restoration contractors had around the country. They all belonged to his program and it was a good marketable offense, but he regretted ever saying it because of this, no matter what you do, there's too many variables out there when it comes down to it. So just like too many variables, when it comes to options of drying, of having companies come in and do work for you. Um, likewise, there's also variables when it comes to the type of workmanship that's done in here. We're just about to our time right now. What, would, what advice would would you say to a customer or even another restoration contractor that might be listening to this right now and says, how do you make yourself a little bit unique? How is your company? I know you, I know Sean, I've never seen a company go this far for a customer in my life, including mine. So um, what advice would you give to somebody? Well, for other contractors, uh, education, uh, their law is con done with the law, but these standards are constantly changing every day. They're coming out with a new type of wood, a new type of material. The homeowners right now, their efficiency of their house is more important. So education is, is key. Learn the standards, go back to school and train, uh, learn what the changes are and, and, and take it, take it to heart uh, for homeowners. It's all research. Take, take the time to Google in today's time, on smartphones, just Google the company, uh, you know, take the time, understand it's an emergency time is an essence, but take the short amount of time just to do some research, do some backup on who's coming to your house. And most importantly, don't be afraid to ask questions with whoever walks into your house. A hundred percent. Now, the million dollar question, how do they find out about you or get a hold of you? Just give them some contact information. If anybody has any questions, I know Sean is an open book, so he gets along with all the restorers in the area. I'm the same way. When I used to live in New York, I'd go to these meetings called the, Nash, the uh, uh, New York City Master Plumbers Council. There was hundreds and hundreds of them at a meeting every day. They all got along for the most part. I'd say 90% of them were all friends and would exchange work and talk to each other, but they hated the person that didn't do the work right because it made the entire association look poor. And they went out of their way, and I watched this, to get somebody like that out of the group because it made everybody look bad. New York City is an animal unlike its own. It has the, the, uh, the buildings, uh, you know, division of New York City that basically manages things, but things slip through the cracks on big, in big cities. They slip through the cracks, and they try to do the best they can for the most part, but there's only so much you can do. What I did find with that, it was, it was a self-cleaning oven, so to speak. They would get rid of a lot of the people that weren't doing the job right or feedback was not good and they didn't want anything to do with them and there was no work. But they all worked together to make commonly a better situation, a better entity, a better industry, so to speak. So after going on my long tangent right there, how did they get a hold of you? Uh, well, the company's name is All States Restoration, English Town, New Jersey. Uh, you could Google it, look it up. Um, we're there. Uh, there's our business card on the door. You call 800 uh, three, seven, nine, six, six, nine, four. Uh, you could do uh one, eight hundred dry now Uh, most importantly, you just Google us. We're out there. Uh, we're right on, right on the main page, all States restoration. Um, and you can email us, call us. Um, we're always there, uh, to come out and take a look, to talk, make friends. That's awesome. And one of the things I noticed, I'm looking at this thing right here. And for people that are going to listen to this, because there may not, not everybody's going to watch it. I'm just reading. It. it says compassion. We are dedicated team players that service others in need the safety. We ensure that our clients and our employees know the safety is a top priority for both sides. Urgency. We know time is critical and to respond when a customer needs us and the accountability to care enough to go above and beyond the promise exceptional customer service. Here's the key word every time. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on the Service Without Excuses podcast. Carl, thank you, my man. Appreciate it.
Great job, by the way. A lot of time, a lot of great information there. You're going to hear this podcast and I'm going to make sure Sean gets it out to anybody that might want to know, because this is important. This is really, really imperative that the customer knows other companies need to know the standards got to come up. It just has to, I like any company and any, you know, builder standards have to come up. Plumbing standards come up. Um, any type of construction, heating, they all come up. So does this. This is no different. And this is dealing with situations in your home that can have adverse effects of you long time if you don't handle them. So again, thanks so much for joining us on the Service Without Excuses podcast. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.